back to my YouTube channel. Hello world, this is me, I should be. starting a new little mini series on exercises and workout regimes for the equestrian athlete. So basically what this means is I'm going to discuss with you guys what exercises I have found worked for me in terms of improving my fitness for my riding and anything I've any exercises that I've repeatedly used like I've said in a couple of my other videos if you want to go watch them I'll leave the links in the bio below. I originally started going to the gym and working out because I wanted to improve my riding and my fitness my fitness for riding and over the last five years I have had some really good results and I wanted to share them with you guys so this is just kind of going to be a bit of a conversation about what I've done and what I've found works for me and I'm going to go through specific exercises and how they've actually helped me with my riding. So this is just what I've been through. If you guys are wanting to know a little bit more about me, I have been riding horses for the last 12 years. I have training experience in eventing, show jumping, bow racing, gymkhana and sporting games and stuff like that. And I'm currently training in dressage. And I'm also a qualified personal trainer and nutrition coach. So all of everything that I'm talking about today, I am fully qualified to say. And it's all from my personal experience from what I have done over the last five years of my training in the gym and in the three years since I've become a qualified PT and nutrition coach. If you guys haven't been to the gym before, if you have any underlying health issues, please, 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 please seek professional help, whether that be a local PT in your gym or your GP or anything like that, please, please make sure you guys stay safe if you guys do decide to try any of these exercises in your own workout routines or ever give them a go. So this is just a guide kind of of what I have been through and what I've experienced and just to kind of give you guys some ideas maybe for anything you guys want to try out. So let's get into it. If you like today's video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos and let's get into it. So as you guys can see from the title, I'm starting with an at-home version of this series because I think it's definitely become a lot more relevant over the last few months. Hello. No. Those huskies disrupt everything. Where was I? So I'm going to start with an at-home series because I feel like that's become a lot more relevant over the last few months with everyone in lockdown. I hope you've all been staying safe with everything that's happening. It's just been... Wow. Um, so yeah, I'm starting with an at-home series and now that the gyms are opening up and as I get my little butt back to the gym, I'll do a gym series as well for exercises you can do in the gym. Let's start with legs. So I have five exercises for training legs at home that I have found have helped me with my training for my riding. And the first one we're going to be starting with is squats. I'm just going to talk about your basic body weight standard squat just because I think super easy, anyone can do it. I think this is something, this is a staple. If anyone follows my at Fit Cookie Fitness Instagram page, you guys can see that this is an exercise that comes up quite regularly just because it's something that I train very, very consistently and I have been training it very consistently for the last like five years. Squats are a compound exercise. So basically what this means, it targets multiple groups of muscles in the body. And the three main groups of muscles that squats target are your glutes, your hammies, and of course your quads, which is the main one that we're trying to target in this exercise. In my experience, I have found that squats are very, very similar to rising trot and two point seat. And I'll put a clip here now so you guys can kind of see why I believe that this is the case. We've all been told by our coaches, heels down, heels down, heels down, our entire lives basically. And when you're squatting, you wanna keep all of your weight through your heels. So I found that this has been extremely helpful for me because it's taught me to sit back kind of on my heels a bit more and drive through my heels, which has definitely been helpful for me when I'm riding and 
helps me kind of remember that to put pressure down through the back of my leg and down my calf and into my heels while I'm riding, especially during sit trot so that my heels don't go for a flip bounce um, around. And I think as well in jump seat, it's helped me keep my lower leg a lot more still. It's given me a lot more stability while I'm in two point jump seat, especially in cross country when my horse likes to absolutely leg it towards a log. It's, helping, it's helped me have a lot more stability and keep my heels down through that motion and give me a bit more strength to actually stand on my legs instead of kind of, when I was younger, I used to get a little bit floppy. And I think, you know, my horse, if you guys have watched my previous video, my horse loves to long spot. So I think doing squats has definitely helped me maintain a lot more stability through my jumping. And it gives me a lot, it's given me a lot more muscular endurance so that if I do go jumping for a while or if I am doing a lot of rise trot or whatever it is, I don't fatigue so easily or I don't get tired so easily and I think that this is extremely important because the worst thing on the planet is when you're like halfway through a hardcore lesson and you're like oh my god my legs are burning like that is not fun and I also think it's given me a lot more balance and stability through the squat so through the actual exercise itself and also stability through the rise trot and the jump seat and the transition is the wrong word Eh, I'm gonna go with it. Transition into jump seat, so it's actually getting out of the saddle and being a lot more balanced as well. And by balance, I mean keeping my weight evenly in both stirrups. And I think it's just been really, really helpful. And obviously when, I'm, when I squat, I'm keeping my weight even through both feet on the ground through the squat and driving through my heels. So keeping all of my weight in my heels when I'm squatting. And this translates to keeping my heels down better in the saddle, having a lot more balance through both stirrups in the saddle, having a lot more stability for me when I actually go to a jump or when I'm rise trotting. It gives me more endurance for when I go out for a long hack uh, or if I'm in a lesson and it's really quite hardcore or if I'm doing cross country or jumping or whatever. I just feel, I've just felt that this has helped me feel a lot more safe and a lot more stable and balanced and has really just helped me on a massive scale. It's a movement that you've, if you do go through my Instagram, that I do a lot of and I will continue to do a lot of in the future because I find it has worked for me. So, squats, that's that. So the next two I am actually going to do together. The first one is lunges and the second one is split squats. So the reason why I'm putting these two together is just because they are so similar. So lunges and Bulgarian split squats are the full name are very, very similar movements to each other. I will put them on the screen now side by side so you guys can kind of see how they are so similar. And the reason why I'm putting these guys after squats is because I found that doing these in conjunction with my squats have actually helped with the similar kind of improvements in my riding. So once again, with these movements, you attire, they are compound exercises, so they use multiple muscle groups, particularly your quads, your hamstrings, and your glutes. So once again, same thing as squats that are targeting. And I have found they're very similar to a rise trot movement again, and two point seat. So there is that as well. It, they've helped me improve my endurance they've helped me improve my balance balance comes into a play a lot more with these because obviously these are a unilateral exercises so they're single leg there's actually something I want to talk a little bit more about with these two exercises in particular and the main thing that I think these two have helped me a lot with is my ankle mobility and my hip mobility and basically the reason for this is because as you can see on the screen right now my front foot, I keep all of my weight in my heel and my back foot is obviously my toe placement so that needs to stay very still and I need to keep all of my weight through my heel in the front leg and drive up through that heel again. So that's the same as a squat, so weight through your heels, heels down, we all know that. So that's kind of the similar kind of feeling that you should get. When I bend down into that motion and my front knee bends and my heel stays firmly planted on the ground is where you get the ankle mobility from and the same with the back leg as well the bend in the knee my toe is planted and the ankle motion the ankle range of motion is what moves mainly so I think this is extremely extremely important and the hip mobility as well is that in these videos it's my left leg that's the front leg and my right leg that's the back leg so my right leg is getting a massive hip stretch 
and I think, you know, that's really helped me. These exercises involve a lot of balance because they are unilateral exercises and they are done single leg. You can't, it's not possible to do them at the same time because then you'd just be squatting. The split squat in particular, I think, requires a lot more balance but simply because you're putting your back foot up onto a bench or a platform of some description. So I think it requires a lot more balance, which is amazing. With this exercise, it's obviously something that is targeted. It targets a lot more of your stabilizing muscles in your ankle. And similar to kind of what I said with the squat, it's the balance and the stability throughout the movement, throughout rise trot, throughout asking for different things with your legs when you're giving an aid. Whether I'm asking for half pass or if I'm asking for a shoulder in or if I'm asking for my horse to move off my leg, whatever it may be, I've got a lot more stability through my legs and a lot more independence with each leg and I know that both of my legs are being trained the same so they're going to be very balanced in terms of strength and endurance as well and I think it's helped me improve my range of motion of my ankle flexion as well because I think I get quite stiff when I don't train these exercises and basically what that means is that my ankle kind of locks particularly with my right ankle I've noticed with my riding gym the split squats have really helped me since i started training them a lot more but um basically what happens is my ankle doesn't kind of it doesn't flex so my heel will go down but then when i'm putting my ankle for example when i'm asking for like a half pass or a leg yield my ankle like velcros to the side of the horse and i think that's just because my range of motion so this is kind of like if we look at a wrist this is kind of the range of motion with your wrist and then obviously you can go around and around so basically my ankle i found was getting kind of like stuck and i couldn't i didn't think i could move my ankle from side to side or up and down as much as i could on my left foot which quite freely moves around and i have really good mobility on so definitely training with the split squat has definitely helped me improve that ankle mobility as well as different stretches and rolling it around and really trying to improve my range of motion with that has helped so much and now my ankle isn't velcroing and I feel like I'm able to get more movement when I'm asking for half pass and I have a lot more control which I really really like I'm a little bit of a control freak and I don't like things if I don't not a huge fan of things when they don't work properly so I've worked really really hard on that that is kind of a new development I've never really had that problem before but I thought I'd mention it just because I'm human and not everything works out that works perfectly all the time even though I do go to the gym a lot and I do work out a lot and I have been fortunate enough to be riding for a long time not everything goes to plan so I just thought I'd mention that one because that's a new development and my latest problem and my latest improvement and this exercise has helped me a lot with that now just a recap for squats, lunges, and split squats. All movements I have found are very similar to rise trot and jump seat, so your two-point seat. Uh, all movements target your quads, hamstrings, and your glutes. All exercises I have found massive improvements in my muscular endurance. So basically what that means is the endurance and being able to do rise trot and jump seat and everything like that for a longer period of time without getting tired or the muscles hurting so much has improved my stability throughout the movements has improved my balance so my weight in my heels having that nice and even and my stability throughout the movement so like my ankles aren't flopping around all over the place when i'm doing rise trot my legs are able to stay on the horse while I'm jumping and stuff like that, particularly with my mare who loves to long spot, I feel a lot more stable and secure in my position because I've been doing squats and lunges and split squats and I feel just a lot more comfortable or in general from doing those exercises. So they have worked wonders for me. So next exercises, I've got two to go. I've got glute bridges and glute kickbacks. I do the glute kickbacks standing just because that's my preference. With the glute bridges and the standing glute kickbacks, I have found that both obviously they're a bit more of an isolated exercise. So they target your glutes and your hamstrings a lot more specifically. So with these exercises, my aim is to squeeze my glutes, which are your butt muscles. First of all, I put an exercise just so you guys know what a glute bridge looks like if you haven't seen it before. Hello. <gasps> Yay! Yay! Can I have a peek? Just for me? Yeah. 
the two main things that I have found that glute bridges have been most helpful for me for is first of all identifying kind of the way I sit in the saddle, do I sit in the saddle evenly, am I lopsided, do I have more strength in one side of my um, glutes or legs or you know am I pretty balanced. The second thing is it's helped me a lot with transitions, particularly when I'm slowing down and if I'm wanting engagement further from behind, definitely squeezing my, my glutes or my butt while asking for these transitions has definitely helped me with pushing my horse into the contact and different things like that. Obviously, I'm not a coach, I'm not a riding coach, but this is just stuff that I found in my own time. Obviously, that's not gonna be, might not be the same with everyone, but this is just what I found, um, particularly with my horse because she is quite sensitive in the mouth, but you need to be quite strong with her and the best way that I found by doing that is by pushing and squeezing my glutes together and pushing her up from behind into my contact in the reins. So definitely glute bridges have helped me identify those muscles so I can isolate them and squeeze them while I'm riding. So that's kind of the first thing. And the other thing is as well, is when I'm doing rise trot, when I was training my horse flute to do extended trot or medium trot, I found that when I squeeze my glutes at the top of the rise, when I'm asking for the extended trot or the medium trot, I found that I got more of a push and that she was actually engaging more from behind. So that was again, a new discovery of mine that I was quite excited about. and. That was after I identified which muscles were my glutes and how to kind of squeeze them when I want them, when I want to. And definitely glute bridges have helped me with that so, so much. Also, you know, balance in the saddle. When I do no stirrup riding, I did a lot of no stirrup riding with my horse because my sit trot was not sit trot, it was horrible. So I made a conscious effort a few years ago to ride my horse without like I'd had stirrups on because my horse is a little bit hot but I made a conscious effort to ride stirrupless. Definitely keeps me upright and prevented me from going like kind of skew whiff and lopsided in the saddle so like leaning put all of my weight on my right seat or all of my weight on the left seat and causing whatever to happen. So I think, you know, that has definitely helped me with that. Now, the glute kickbacks I found have helped me in a different way to the glute bridges. So I have had different results in terms of my riding. This is a sing unilateral exercise, so single leg. And I found that it has helped me massively with putting my leg behind the girth and being able to ride a bit more independently in terms of movements of my legs. Now, this is where the two kind of meet in the middle, the glute bridges and the glute kickbacks kind of meet nicely is that when I'm asking, for example, for a leg yield or a half pass, training the glute bridges I found has helped me maintain my balance through my seat while I'm sitting in the saddle. So keeping my seat nice and tall and keeping me nice and straight. The glute kickbacks have actually helped me move my legs a bit more independently of each other. And with the glute kickback, I'm contracting my glute and my hammy and that kind of movement in the glute kickback is very, very similar to when I'm contracting my glute and my hammy when I'm asking to put my leg behind the girth. For example, if I was asking for half pass or if I was asking for a leg yield or even asking for canter. And I found that that's extremely, been extremely, extremely helpful in terms of maintaining my balance throughout asking for a half pass. I have found that I'm a lot more even in terms of my motions throughout asking for half pass both ways. And I'm getting even range of motion and an even strength on both sides of my body and both legs when I'm doing all of my lateral movements and bending and everything like that, which is amazing. Especially now that I'm heading up into the more advanced movement and dressage to have that kind of confidence and in my body and knowing that what I'm actually doing is helping my riding is just phenomenal. And I just wanted to share that with you guys, whether you guys get a bit of inspiration from this video or I don't really know but if this is helpful for you guys or if you just wanted more information about kind of like what I do with my riding and how riding and going to the gym kind of meet nicely in the middle um, then that's it for you guys so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and episode two will be on upper body exercises for at home and the final one will be core because I feel like core 
deserves her own moment because I have a lot to talk about in that department. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you in any way or inspired you or if you guys got any information out of it, then that's amazing. And I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week. Bye.